Hello and welcome to another Green Giant Tactical Airsoft review video. Today I have another gun, uh, another gas one for that matter, um, and this is something quite dear to my heart. Um, it is possibly one of the best cheap, well, it, it's not that, it is the best cheap gas rifle on the market. Um, it's become ridiculously popular in the UK, especially if not around the world. And it is the GHK G5. It doesn't look particularly like any weapon, it's kind of an amalgamation of anything you can think of NATO in one gun. So, ignoring the, so what you get in the box, uh, ignoring the stuff that I've added to it, you won't get the T1, that's something I've added, you won't get all these rail clips and so on, and you don't get the foregrip. But everything else is what you'll get. You've got a retractable stock, which is nice, solid, it creaks a bit, but it's polymer, so what do you expect? Um, you've got a folding stock, which clips down to the side and makes this a ridiculously short gun. Uh, that's probably about, probably no more than 12, 13 inches long, which makes it extremely pointable and makes it very clear that this is a CQB gun. So. What else do we have? Uh, MP5 style charging handle, which brings the bolt back like so. And then if I then push it back, you've got a nice solid metal bolt. Um, I'd assume it's probably aluminium. Um, you can get a steel upgrade bolt, but upgrade is dependent on perspective because it has certain issues. Um, to be honest, the easiest way to run this is to run it stock, which for a gas gun is not something you hear very often nowadays. Um, you also get one whopping great mag. These are expensive, but they are by far the best gas mag I've come across in the past five years. You're looking at about, per gas charge, so one gas fill, uh, between for my own personal performance, between three and six mags worth of gas. That is wholly dependent on temperature. When I got the six gas, well, six mags and one gas, that was because I was running in 25 degrees with green gas and at constant temperature, and I was only firing on semi-automatic. Obviously, if you fire an auto, you'll use up gas more because it's requiring more gas to cycle the bolt. But who uses... Uh, you've got... 40 rounds. Um, I rarely load them above 30 because I like to retain the springs longer than is necessary. At 265 is the average for the gun with one mag. And each extra mag is about 50 quid. Again, dependent on the retailer. Um, this particular option go came from Mad Dog Airsoft in Cambridgeshire. Um, my local site, if you hadn't already gathered where all the other videos. <laughs> um, but uh, you've got a metal bird cage style, well, sort of, it's a metal flash hider with a polymer body. The only thing that are really uh, not polymer on this is basically any internal working components and the flash hider. Everything else is polymer, but it's solid. This is, this is not cheap. This is really well built. The only caveat to that being the charging handle but there are ways around that. Um, you have, you would normally have front and rear flip up sights, but I've opted to remove the rear one and just close down the fronts. Um, so, without further ado, I'm just going to swap to having a quick breakdown so I can dry fire this for one. So, easy enough takedown. This is pretty much essential if you're going to be intending to. So, take the rear pin out. So the rear pin back here. Just get something to lever it out so you can pull it through. This I'm just using clippers because they're available. So, pull that through. And then the receiver splits back. And like that. You've got the one at the front, you need a flathead screwdriver to pull apart, but I'll get to that at a later point. So use the bolt to push that back out, or the charging handle, and the entire bolt pulls out in this one mechanism. So this is a Gen 2 variation, so 
where that differs is it's slightly strengthened in the rear of the lower receiver and you've got a little rubber pad on the back end of the buffer so that when the bolt slams back it has something to bounce against because this is only made of plastic and it's not a nice plastic like the body it's a rather rigid one uh, so they had been known to break a little but this I highly doubt will actually happen in its usable lifetime. Basically, you're looking at about fifty to 60,000 rounds through this before it even shows signs of deteriorating properly. Uh, FPS. Uh, I've seen a lot of these Gen 2s when I've been working on them um, uh, for customers and um, Yes, uh, you'll need to replace this. You'll, you need a one dual nozzle for this to be able to use it in the UK. Unless, of course, you frequent and only frequent the few sites in the UK that allow you to run above 350 FPS on an automatic rifle. Um, they are few and far between, so if you just want to make it easier on yourself, get a low power nozzle. Um, I fit them if you want to contact me through the Facebook page. Um, uh, other than that, it's a nice solid nozzle, there's no faffing around with varying FPS on an M-Pass. You can get an adjustable nozzle if you really must, but honestly I don't need... With this one dual nozzle in, it, it's doing 320 FPS on a good day. Sometimes it will bump up depending on the temperature, but it will never go above 350, it's just not possible. Um, what it is, but you'd be looking at that point where the plastic starts melting. Um, it's nice solid bolt and that the bolt is just one lump of metal and just holds the nozzle in place. Got a, a fairly solid recoil spring. Um, simple as that. Um, so that just slides back into the receiver and a few things they've changed since the Gen 1 is before the mag catch was primarily magnetic where now it's an actual physical catch so it's slightly stronger. Um, you've got a magnetically held uh, bolt catch so this is what makes the bolt lock back which is why I'm removing it for the period of time I'm doing the review so that when I do the testing with fires I can actually cycle it instead of it just locking in place because there's no external bolt catch that's the one thing it hasn't got. And it's going to play ball. There we go. So, so put a gas mag in. Just check it's got gas in it. Yep, that's got gas. This is by far the most satisfying of any gas weapon I fired from stock um, to actually shoot. So, bring it up to the camera and get a bit more lights. So, in semi, my help if I charge the bolt. In semi, you can see there is a fair amount of recoil on that. And then of course in auto, which everyone loves on gas blowbacks. Yeah, it's loud, it's fast, and it's flawless in that respect. Um, what is there to worry about? Um, it's advised that you don't shoot much, if at all, when you've got it arranged like this because it's impacting in the back and it hasn't got anything to stop it at the back and that's a known stress point. Whether that's been improved with Gen 2, I've yet to see one fail, but then I've only recently been receiving Gen 2s, despite them being out for a while. Um, so yeah, don't fire it like that. Um, if you can avoid it anyway. I, I don't really care because it's rather useful having a gun in that size when you're going around the corner because you can just peek round and not have to worry about the stock floating about all over the place. Obviously it won't if it's locked back but um, what can you do for upgrades? Pistol grips, it will take gas blowback and real steel only. AEG ones do not work. Um, you have an adapter that comes in the box which allows you to convert this to an M4 stock uh, and you'll need to buy an external stock tube kit um, which GHK do sell. Um, 
that can be got through many of the UK retailers. Um, you can also get longer kits, so a carbine kit which extends it out to about there um, on the actual body itself and a barrel out to 12 inches. And you can also get a 16 inch DMR kit which is the same body set up but with a extended barrel out to about that. Um, yeah, that's about right. It's about out there and it has no screw thread for the flashlight up front. You also get cheap weld pads to go into. You can get the camera to focus. The, you can just about see it. These notches at the top hold a cheap weld piece, which allows you to get a better sight picture when you're on the side. For me, that's not a worry because that will actually get in my way because I've got quite a big head. Um, so, that's about it. Um, obviously the usuals are, it's, so, quick recap, 270 for the gun with a mag, extra mag would cost you about 50 quid, um, you'll need to get the nozzle um, if you want to use it in the UK, uh, but that's about 15 quid and will cost, depend on who's fitting it, it be about 30 to 40 quid total to get it fitted, um, uh, including the price of the parts. Um, or some retailers will do it from stock, but that's up to them. Um, obviously, you've got Ambi release on the mag on both, so release catch for the mag on both sides. So it's lefty friendly. There was everything on this is lefty friendly if you're a lefty, uh, with the exception of the stock. But that's not really a big worry. Um, hell, if you extend the stock out like that. And fold it forward it actually for a left hander that doubles up as a foregrip anyway so you don't even need to get a foregrip on this if you want one because you just hold it like that and it works nicely um so um i thoroughly recommend this if you want to buy one um there are, up, are available up and down the uk and go for it it's a perfect entry into the start of gas blowback rifles if you are looking to head that way, more so than any other brands, because this will just run and run and run. For instance, you can even run the bolt on this with a gun console on and not even have to clean it for a couple of weeks and it will still run. It won't run as well, but it will run. Do that with any other rifle, I dare you. <laughs> uh, no, in reality, don't. Um, right, so, as usual, um, you'll find the links below to like us on Facebook. Um, to find us on Twitter, um, where there'll be the occasional tweet, but it'll usually be posts of videos, and uh, YouTube itself, uh, if you can subscribe there, uh, all the links will be below, and uh, links to the website as well. Um, so, that'll be it. Thanks for watching, goodbye. <laughs>